into the waiting room? Sure. Okay, great. Good. Well, welcome everyone. Uh, last uh, last lecture of term, and uh, today Professor Betts and I will share things. We'll give you a few additional thoughts on creating a pitch. Uh, we'll give you a chance to uh, give us feedback on our pitch, and I'm going to test out the breakout rooms for a, a little bit today, giving you a chance to break into small groups and discuss with each other. <clears throat> and I had hoped to uh, test this out a little more in advance, but I haven't had the opportunity, so we'll simply see how it how it works out. So I'll just share my screen with you. So we talked uh, last week and yesterday about uh, creating a pitch. And um, there's some good questions that came up yesterday about how much <clears throat> you should be doing here. Like what's realistic? How much uh, research should you put into this? And how much time should you spend in the presentation actually talking about this? Uh, and so it seems to me that, um, you know, that the research should show that you've surveyed the landscape. That's, I guess, the message that we've been sending out all along. And that the research that you do showing us what already is out there that's like what you're doing or um, is connected to what you're doing, the more you can provide that research, the better it will motivate your pitch. You'll be able to then identify something that's unique, an opportunity, a gap for yourself uh, to fill. Uh, we don't expect that you're going to be an expert here. We expect to see that you are able to provide just, as I say, a kind of uh, an overview of the landscape. And realistically, you're only going to have a few minutes at most to survey the landscape in your presentation. And then an interested viewer could look later for more detail. So don't sweat this, right? Don't feel that you have to become expert in the field. And I just wanted to point back to an example that I used uh, a few years ago. Um, this was in 2016, I think, when the, there was a lot of concern about refugee camps. Uh, it was sort of the uh, I guess sort of the coronavirus issue at that time. There was a crisis in Syria and the Middle East and refugee camps were uh, kind of uh, becoming a, a necessary thing for many uh, who were fleeing their countries and it became uh, something of a crisis. And some of you may be familiar with the, uh, with the GIS lounge. It's a uh, kind of a, an, an information and news site for, for GIS. And back in 2016, uh, one of the uh, articles posted there was on how spatial modeling could help with refugee aid, showing a, a recent paper that was published that demonstrated that, uh, that Turkey could, could better allocate its refugee camps by using certain different uh, analytic spatial algorithms. There was uh, some focus on how uh, victims in the uh, earthquakes in Haiti could better be informed about how to respond to, to the crisis. And in this article, they also took a look at uh, one of the refugee camps in South Sudan. And it was statistics, here's a static map of how food distribution could be uh, allocated to the, uh, the, the, the residents of this, this refugee camp. And when I looked at this, um, I took a look at the citation to see where this, uh, where this information, this map was coming from. And it took me to, to this article here in their list of references. And so I took a look at the article uh, using GIS as a planning and coordination tool uh, in the refugee camps in the South Sudan. And at the very beginning of the article, we come to understand what the situation is, that in natural disasters and in emergencies, access to high quality, timely information is kind of a critical precondition for aid. 
Um, but there's a problem that recent crises have exposed a shortcoming of the humanitarian community in rapidly and effectively using information on the key needs. And then it looked more specifically at specific gaps uh, for concerns for the emergency phase of a crisis and then in the recovery and development uh, phases. And then the last part of the article then proposed a solution, which is REACH, which is an initiative of two NGOs and a UN program. And the partnership of these uh, agencies uh, in, in creating REACH has uh, started to address these shortcomings uh, in, in GIS. So here's a start at kind of a research base that's showing a, a, a situation, a problem, and a solution. And then we would think that if you looked a little bit further, what could you add to this solution? What would you bring to it? So you would need to do a little bit more research, but quite honestly, in your survey of the landscape in your presentation, we don't expect a lot more than this kind of coverage of the background one step further perhaps, but uh, this would be an initial uh, kind of survey that would be sufficient for the, uh, for the OP2 presentation. And one thing that, that I just wanted to draw your attention to earlier in term, uh, I recommended as a text, uh, St Stephen Pinker's text on, uh, on style. And um, one of the statements that he makes in, the, in his uh, text is that the, the guiding metaphor for the classic style of writing is what he calls just simply seeing the world. That the writer can see something that the reader has not yet noticed and he orients the reader's gaze so that she can see it for herself. And for me, that's always seemed like really good advice, not only for a writer, but for a presenter as well. That you see something, you know something, and you're going to show it to us. And this is one way to overcome the curse of knowledge. It's kind of understood you see and have an understanding, perhaps, of this background on the GIS, and you're going to show it to us. And this information here could be useful not only for your pitch, but really for any kind of communication task that you have. You know something we don't, show it to us. So what we're gonna try and do here for a few minutes, I'm gonna to try to set up uh, breakout rooms. So I'm going to put you into uh, groups of three, maybe four, and each of you in your group will have the opportunity to give a one minute version of your planned OP2 pitch. This is sort of like the pitch that Professor Betts was suggesting yesterday, like the elevator pitch. You've got a very short moment as the elevator goes from the first to the 15th floor. Here's my plan. Lay it out kind of quickly and as succinctly as possible. And after each of you has a chance to give this one minute pitch, the others in the group will provide maybe just about one minute in total of feedback. And I was thinking it could be on any of the following, which could be, did you understand the main point in the pitch? Was the presentation, was it memorable? Can you remember uh, things that the speaker has just said and why? What makes those points memorable? And then just on a more perhaps kind of technical note, was the audio and video clear? Could you see, could you hear? Maybe you have a few, um, maybe a few suggestions that you would make uh, along those lines. Um, <clears throat> now I think I'm going to have to go, uh, stop sharing my screen, hold on one second here. Breakout rooms, okay. So 30 participants into, so it, it's asking me to create rooms with five participants per room. Let's try that. Let's just see how it works. I'm going to create these breakout rooms. And I'm going to now 